Hey Wildcats! Let's mix things up in the STEM lab today and talk about mixtures. Mixtures are very common. Whenever you mix or combine two different things together, which we call ingredients, you have a mixture. For example, mud is a mixture of dirt and water. Cake batter is also a mixture and it has lots of different ingredients. If you wanted to make a vanilla cake, you would use ingredients like these. Butter, powdered sugar, milk, salt, baking soda, baking powder, eggs, flour, sugar, vanilla extract, and sour cream. Sometimes it's easy to see the parts of a mixture. For example, we have a bunch of Legos, which are a whole lot of different blocks of different sizes, shapes, and colors. And we also have some loose change, which has quarters, dimes, nickels, and pennies. You can see all the different parts of these mixtures. Here are a couple of other examples of mixtures where you can easily see the parts, or at least most of the parts. With pizza, you have the crust, the pizza sauce, cheese, and pepperoni. You can't see the sauce because it's buried under the cheese, but you can easily see the rest of the ingredients. And then we have Chex Mix, which has cereal, pretzels, bagel chips, nuts, and spices. Other mixtures are made of very small parts. The parts might be so small that you don't even see them as separate parts, or they may be mixed together so well that you can't see them. When you take water, sugar, and lemon juice and mix them together, you get lemonade. But once it's mixed together, you can't see the individual ingredients. You just see the glass of lemonade. Another yummy example is a mocha frappuccino. There's coffee, ice, chocolate syrup, whipped cream, and then even more chocolate syrup on top. But once they mix it all together, you can't see the coffee and the chocolate syrup that's mixed in and the ice. All you can see is the drink and then the whipped cream and chocolate syrup on top. Here are another two examples of mixtures with very small parts. First, we have cement, which is a mix of sand, water, and gravel. And then we have some Windex, which is a mixture of water, chemicals, fragrance, and blue dye. In both of these, you can't very easily see the different parts of the mixture. Ingredients in mixtures don't change their properties. If I had a pile of red buttons and a pile of blue buttons, when I mix them together, would they turn into purple buttons? Of course not. The red buttons would stay red and the blue buttons would stay blue. The parts of a mixture keep their properties. This trail mix is a mixture of nuts, raisins, dried cranberries, and M&Ms. Let's talk about the properties of the ingredients. Nuts are crunchy and salty. Raisins and dried cranberries are squishy and sweet. M&Ms are hard and sugary and chocolatey. When they are added together to make the trail mix, the ingredients stay the same. The nuts are still crunchy and salty, the raisins and dried cranberries are still squishy and sweet, and the M&Ms are still hard and sugary and chocolatey. The combination of the different tastes and textures is what makes trail mix so delicious. Sometimes mixtures need to be separated into their parts. Some mixtures are very easy to separate and others are really difficult to separate. Let's take a closer look. I have several different mixtures here with me today. Let's see how we would separate each one of them. The first mixture is different types of melon, watermelon, honeydew, and cantaloupe. If I wanted to separate them, what would I do? The pieces are all about the same size, but they are pretty large. And because they're different colors, it's easy to tell them apart. So I can use a spoon to separate them into different piles. And now we have the three different types of melons separated. My next mixture is metal paper clips, plastic paper clips, and coins. How could I separate these ingredients? Well, the plastic paper clips are pretty large and very colorful, so they're easy to see in the other ingredients. So I can use my fingers to separate those from the rest of the mixture. Metal paper clips are magnetic, so I can use a magnet to pick them up and move them aside. Now I can use my fingers to separate the coins by type. The pennies are a different color than the other coins, so I will separate them first. Now I'm left with quarters and dimes. They're the same color, but different sizes, so I can easily separate them. Okay. 
This mixture and the fruit mixture were both very easy to separate. Let's look at some more mixtures. Now I have a mixture of rocks, gravel, and sand. How would I separate the ingredients in this mixture? Since the rocks are much larger than the rest of the mixture, I can use my fingers to separate those out. And now that leaves me with gravel and sand. Since there are many small pieces of gravel, it would be very difficult to use my fingers to remove those from the mixture. The pieces of sand are tiny, so if I put the mixture into this sifter, all of the sand will fall out, so I'll be left with only the gravel. This mixture was a little harder to separate than the first two, but I still was able to do it without a whole lot of effort. This mixture may look like salt and pepper mixed together, but what it actually is, is white sand and iron filings. The pieces of sand and iron filings are very small, so using my fingers would not be a good way to separate these. It may be almost impossible to do this. So what do you think I should use? Iron filings are magnetic, so I can move this magnet through the mixture, which will pick up the filings. And now I'm just left with the white sand and the iron filings have been separated. My last mixture is sand and water. How can I separate these ingredients? I could try to use my fingers, but it would be very difficult to separate them this way. I can't use the sifter I used before because the water and sand would both filter through. But maybe there's another type of filter I could use. This is a coffee filter. When you brew a pot of coffee, the coffee grounds are put into the filter and then the water runs over them and through the filter as coffee, but the grounds are left behind in the filter. Let's see if it does the same thing with the sand. I'll put the filter over this cup and then I will secure it with the rubber bands. Now I'll pour the mixture into the filter. The water goes through the filter and into the cup, but if I take the rubber band off, you can see that all of the sand stayed behind in the in the filter so the mixture is now separated. I hope you've enjoyed learning about mixtures with me today. I'll see you next time, hopefully in person. Bye!